Hello, my name is Robert Adut and welcome to yaymath.org. This is called Yaymath in Studio, where I bring to you first and foremost from a first person perspective, how to do these high level Algebra 2 topics. Today's topic for Yaymath is infinite geometric series. Now, I really like these. Um, I think they're interesting and I'm going to demonstrate and explain to you why I find them very interesting, all right? So first, let's define it. We need a geometric series is basically a geometric sequence, um, which is a sequence that progresses by multiplication. So this progresses by multiplication. And then we're going to add up all the terms, all terms, all right? So that's the idea. So first, let's understand and get an example of a um, geometric sequence here. So we conclude this is a geometric sequence because it does progress by multiplication. 2 times what is 6? Six? 6 times what is 18? 18. 18 times what is 54? It progresses by r equals 3, by a factor of 3. The rate is 3. The question is, if I continued on to infinity and I added all these up, all the way up to infinity, would that even be possible is the question. And the answer is no, because I would never be able to get a fix on what that total sum was if it kept going on and on and on towards infinity. So there is a term for this. This is divergent. That's the term they give. So it's like it just goes and goes and gets away from us. We can't really add up this particular sequence because um, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. We we'll never know what it is. But what if the sequence was like this? Eight, looking at it, four, two, one, one half. Yeah, let's go further. One fourth, one eighth, and so on. Now, if you look closely, this is also a geometric sequence. It does progress by multiplication. In this case, we're multiplying by one half. We could even see that four over eight is the same as 2 over 4 is the same as 1 over 2, right? So it progresses each time by 1 half, r equals 1 half. So if you think it through, if you keep multiplying this by a half and a half and a half and a half and a half, it would get smaller, 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 and it would converge on some value. So it would converge to some value, and if you were to add all these up, you would actually get a number. It would actually sort of peter out and fizzle out and go away. It basically goes closer and closer to zero. Because if you keep multiplying this by a half and a half and a half, it would just get smaller and smaller and smaller and then eventually it sort of just stops, essentially, and you can add them up and actually get a value, okay? So that is what an infinite geometric series is. When this number and this sequence goes on to infinity and we add them all up. Um, let's give you that formula. The sum, let's put it over here as well. The sum equals first term over one minus r. That's it, it's kind of amazing. First term over one minus r is the sum of all these terms added up to infinity, which is just crazy to me how simple it is. All right, let's, let's prove it. First term, eight over one minus r, in this case is one half. So this becomes eight over one half. How many times does one half go into eight? 16. There it is. That's the sum of this infinite geometric series. And you know what's even more fun? I noticed that you could find the 16 hiding inside here. Check it out. Eight plus four, that's 12. This is uh, 14 plus one, 15. So this is like 15 right here. And then you have all the chunks, all the fractions. One half plus a fourth plus an eighth. Keep adding, adding, adding. One over 16, one over 32. Keep adding them up. All that stuff would basically add to one over time. And there's your 16 right there hiding inside. All these numbers add up to 16. That's all it is. That was my eraser. Not it. Oh, there it is. Let me get this bag out of the way. Okay, 
So this one looks a little intimidating at first, but we have to first see um, whether it's geometric. So let's do the test. We divide the second term by the first and see what that is. That's the same as 1 over 2 times 3 over 2. Um, that works, which is 3 over 4. So if this is geometric, we should get the same rate for dividing the third term into the second here, or over the second, so that will be 3 over 8 divided by 1 half. We're just trying to get the rate here, which is the same as 3 over 8 times 2 over 1, which indeed goes, this is 4, this is great, 3 over 4, yes. So we're confirming that this is a geometric sequence in which the rate of growth is 3 over 4. Now here's the giveaway. How do you know if a series will be convergent or divergent? How do you know if this will fizzle out eventually and go closer and closer to zero such that you can add it up? Or if it won't fizzle out and if it'll just become bigger and bigger and bigger and then we will not be able to get the infinite sum? How do you know, right? The answer is pretty logical once you wrap your head around it. Would it make sense that if this number continues to get smaller and smaller and smaller, eventually it'll be convergent, it'll close in on a specific value? Versus if this number gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it'll just go to infinity and explode and we would never be able to get a grip on it. So this value here needs to basically be less than one. If you multiply by something less than one, then this value, the, the, the sequence will continue to get smaller and smaller. Not only that, it would be okay if r was actually negative in that case. So it's okay to multiply by a number that's negative, but basically you want to say it like that. So the absolute value of r, whatever that r is, needs to be less than one, because that will make these guys get smaller and smaller and smaller. Eventually they'll fizzle out and go to zero, and then you could add up what's those, those terms on the line. I hope that makes sense. So as long as your r value, your rate is less than one, uh, you're in good shape. And we are. Let's find out what this infinite geometric series would be, what it would add up to. Formula S equals first term 2 over 3 over 1 minus the rate is 3 over 4. This is it. This is the sum of infinite terms. It's crazy to me. Let's find out what it is. This is 2 over 3 over this is 4 fourths minus 3 fourths is 1 fourth, all right, which is the same as 2 over 3 times 4, which is 8 over 3. Wow. 8 thirds, 2 and 2 thirds. All these numbers added up to infinity is nothing more than 2 and 2 thirds. How about that? It's amazing. Okay. Okay, here we have an infinite geometric sum as well. You'll see this is the, the symbol sigma, symbol, uh, uh, the Greek uh, symbol for sigma stands for sum. That's a lot of S's. <laughs> the Greek symbol for sigma stands for sum. Uh, <laughs> that's a lot. So you'll notice that the sum ranges from when k is 1 all the way to when k is infinity, okay? So that's the giveaway that it's infinite. We ask ourselves, can this be done? And the answer is yes, for the simple fact that our rate of growth right here is a fraction that's less than one. So that's good news. And we also can get our first term. The first term is when k is one. And when k is one, we throw in one over here. Let's see what would happen. When k is one, we would get 5 thirds times 3 over 8 to the 1 minus 1. Again, the first term is when k is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. That's 5 over 3 times 3 over 8 to the 0. This is the number 1, so that becomes 5 over 3. A big giveaway for anything in sigma notation like this, when you see geometric sequences as such, that the rate is hiding inside here that's raised to the power, and inevitably this becomes the first term. It's kind of amazing. You could sort of decode it right in there because when k is 1, this thing goes away. That becomes the number 1 times 5 thirds. There it is. That's the first term. Let's go ahead and get this infinite sum. 
sum equals the first term, 5 over 3. 1 minus the rate. What's the rate? None other than 3 over 8. Doing it and doing it and doing it well. Uh, 8 over 8 minus 3 over 8 is 5 over 8. Ooh, this is nice. So we're going to get 5 over 3 times uh, 8 over 5. And these go boom, boom. And we get 8 over 3 again. All right, that's for this particular one. All right, that's a coincidence from the last problem, right? Because you see different starting terms. Okay, one more. Now, admittedly, when I was prepping for this particular lesson, um, I learned that you can express this as a fraction using infinite geometric series. I learned this last night, okay? I literally learned this last night. There are ways to express 0.96 repeating as a fraction using other algebraic terms or other algebraic methods, but there is a way to do it with infinite geometric series and we're gonna do that now. It's kind of pretty amazing the way it works. Okay, so this is an infinite geometric series and I'll prove it to you because this can be expressed as, again, this is 0.96 repeating. That's what this bar means. So it's like, it's like this, 0 0.969696 96 on and on and on and on, all right? So, um, <laughs> class of 96, Wildcats. Oh my God, I can't do shout outs for myself anymore. I'm dating myself hardcore. So this is the, uh, this is the infinite geometric series. I'll show it to you. That means it's 0 0.96 plus 0 0.0096. You see it? That's where this 96 was. Now I have four decimal places taken into account, plus 0 0.000096. See that? So that I have 96 here, then I have 0, 0, 0096 here, then I have four decimal places, and then another 96 here, and I just keep adding to infinity, don't I? Right? So if that's the case, you can represent this using infinite geometric sequences. Let's see if we can get, <clears throat> let's see if we can get the formula. The sum equals the first term, 0.96, one minus the rate. Now, what's the rate? How do you go from here to here? How do you go from here to here? What do you multiply by? What do you multiply 0.96 by to get 0 0.0096? You see it? You see how the decimal place moved over twice? One, two. That means you multiplied by one over 100, right? You multiply by one over 100. In other words, if you multiply by one over 100, or you, it's sort of like a percent thing, you move the decimal over twice for these two zeros. So that's the rate, one over one over 100. All right, so now we can simplify this and we're done. So for funsies, I wanna turn this all into a fraction land. So this would be 96 over 100. That's what 0.96 is. This would be um, 100 over 100 minus 1 over 100. That's 99 over 100. Okay, that's what that is. That's 1 minus 100 would be 99 hundredths left. So if you look closely, you know that you could do this. If I'll prove it to you, 96 over 100 times 100 over 99, gone, gone and you're left with 96 over 99. This simplifies by a factor of three. Three goes into this 32 times, three goes into this 33 times. There it is. The fraction 32 over 33 is 0.96 repeating. iPhone's gonna prove it. Here we go. Come on, baby. I still get excited to prove it. Here we go, long ways. 32 divided by 33. Wow. That's cool. See it there? It's a great way to prove it. Okay. So that's it. That's expressing repeating decimals as infinite geometric series. 
and thus turning them into fractions, which we did over here. Okay, I hope you found that cool. Thanks for watching. All right, see you next time.